In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add dynamic colors in your pie charts to signify if your values reach certain thresholds. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So in a recent video that I uploaded recently, I covered some of the different ways that you can create or show progress using progress bars, either using the native gauge or the line chart in Power BI. However, there is one visual that I didn't cover, the pie chart or the donut chart, which you can also use to signify or show the progress of your values. It's actually one of the visuals that I applied at work and I found it really interesting to implement. And that's because it currently has a limitation in which you can't really use conditional formatting to change or adjust the colors of the bar based on its certain values. So let me just show you. So here's a report that I prepared for you today. It's the typical Northwind data set. I just took a subset of this data set. But the important thing to understand here is that I have a bunch of sales on every single month here that I've added a slicer for. Each month will have a different set of total sales, which is calculated based on the unit price and quantity of all the sales within that month. And on each of those months, or I just have a static value here, 60,000 as my target. One of the tasks that I had to do was to visualize the sales as a progress bar. So showing how the total sales compare to the target, not only to show how far you are from the target, but also change the color of the bars so that they can gauge if it's too far or it's close enough. So the values, in this case, we have 60,000 as our target, maybe we want if these total sales is less than 20,000, we want it to be red. Or if it's um, less than 40,000, it will be amber. Or if it's above 40,000, it will be green. And that's the kind of thing that I wanted to visualize using the pie charts. Now, if I just add the sales and targets, just as a pie chart, just using the donuts, you will see that it doesn't make any sense yet because we're gonna update it in a second. But when you look at the slices, where you would typically expect a conditional formatting icon is not here. So you can't really change the color of the sales part, the, the, the color of it dynamically using DAX or using some calculations. So we kind of have to be a little bit creative with this solution. So the first few things that we need to do is we need to create separate measures for the different thresholds that we want. So one measure for the red, so if it's less than 20,000, one for amber, and then one for green. And I'm going to explain more why we need to do this in a second. So we're going to just start by creating a new measure here. I'm just going to call this red. And I'm going to wrap an if statement here and say, if the sales is less than or equals to 20,000, just give me the sales value. And that's it. I'm going to create the second measure for our amber here. Again, we're going to write another if statement here. And I'm going to say if the sales is less than or if it's greater than 20,000 and the sales is less than or equals to 40,000. We want to take the sales value. And then the last measure, we're going to create one for green. So we're going to say if sales is greater than 40,000, we want to just take the sales value. Or we want to just, I'm just going to add something here, which is a logic for our target. So if the sales is greater than the target. Give me the total target, else give me the sales. So it's an if statement within an if statement. So this one is saying that if you are more than 40,000 and if you exceed the target, so let's say the target is 60,000 and the sales is 140, you might want to just make sure that it's 60,000 instead. So that's what the second if statement is for. It's not absolutely necessary, but this is more for me to 
be able to control it easier. So we've created all of the measures that we need now. Oh, actually, no, we're missing one more, which is the calculation for the remainder. So the gray part of your progress bar when you're visualizing your sales, just to show how it is as part of a whole. So we're going to create a new measure here, and we're going to say remaining. And I'm going to write another if statement here saying if the sales is less than target, so if, if there is some calculation happening, just give me the target minus sales. Else we'll just leave it blank because if it's greater than the target, then it would have exceeded the target anyway. So we don't want the remaining to show. And I think we are pretty much ready with all of our measures. So let's go back to this pie chart or this donut chart here. And let's start replacing a few things. So let's, let's remove the sales. Let's add our colors. So red, amber, and green. And the reason why we have them as separate measures is so that we can assign individual colors for them because now we don't have this luxury of ha adding a custom conditional formatting for one measure. So instead of creating one measure that adjusts, we just created three different measures. And the reason why this works is that sales or at least the total sales is only going to be in one state at a time. It's either going to be within the reds, within the amber, or within the green. And if one of those are true, it will show up as part of the pie chart. Whereas if they're not, they will always be empty. Because if you noticed in a lot of our if statements, we typically need to give it three parameters, the expression, the true value, and the false. We've only given it the expression, which is like what, what is trying to, to compare, what the value should be if that statement is true. But if you leave the false bit empty, which is what we've done this time, it's just going to be empty. So it's not going to return anything. And that's exactly what we want in terms of functionality. So we'll leave that one as red. We'll just go make this one amber and this one green. I'm just going to choose green from here like this. And then we will also add remaining. And then for the remaining, we will just make it gray like this. So we'll remove the legend because we don't need that anymore. And there you go. So you have pretty much a working progress, progress pie chart, essentially. You are able to select the months here. So this month, there are no sales. So that's why it's showing as none. Whereas for this one, for example, it's showing everything. So it's showing 60,000. So it's over the target. Now, there are a few things that we can update here to kind of clean this up a little bit. First thing is to just rename those values to make sure that they're always showing sales. So we're just going to rename the, them all, make them all the same. And then what you notice in this example, that the sales for this month is 134,000. However, when you hover over the donut chart, it's only showing 60,000. And that's because of the logic that we applied to the sales on the green. So if it's above 60,000, just cap it to 60. And uh, while we are capping it to 60, we want to make sure that whatever is showing in these two tips are going to be the correct value. So in this case, we're going to try to use the dynamic dynamic format strings to adjust and change this to show the actual sales value. So what we need to do is go to the green part here and adjust this to change the format instead of using currency to choose dynamic. Now it will take you here to this bit, but don't panic, just follow what I uh, will use here as my kind of format string. So first we'll use four double quotes followed with an ampersand, and then we're going to add a format here and just give me the sales in this format. So the format is pound sign hash hash dot zero. So that's the format string that we want. So now, as you can see, it's giving us the total sales value here now correct in our donut chart. So as you can see, it's showing us the right values already if we are within the kind of target. Is showing and it changes into okay, maybe not these months changes into red if it's below it's showing green if it's above 
And then here we go. So this one is also it's a number. So it's um, it's within it's less than 40 and it's greater than 20. You can adjust how those de detail labels are as well. So if you wanted to show the category and the data value like this, you can do so as well. So dynamic format strings is a feature that was released not so long ago, and it gives you full control over how your measures are being displayed onto your Power BI reports. If you want to learn more about how you can utilize it and how you can customize your visuals even further, I have a video covering it. So check it out if you haven't yet. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create some sort of progress chart using the pie charts or the donut charts in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.